Hi, and welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. Just want to let you know that Boson extended their holiday sale to the end of this week. So it is 25% off, uh, whether that's XSIM, NetSIM, their courseware, things like that. So I've recommended Boson's products for quite a while. Uh, when I was studying for my CCNA, CCNA Security, CCNP, I used their products and they were, they were extremely helpful. I can't say enough good things about them. So use this code MARY19 at checkout and you'll get 25% off. You can check the links in the description. Okay, so let's uh, check out a few questions from their XSIM. In my giveaway video, I did a few questions, but we'll do a few more today. Maybe, let's say, five questions. So I'm opening their Boson exam environment. This is the software you use to access all of their practice exams, whether it's for CCNA, CCNP, CCIE, uh, AWS, Microsoft, things like that. As you can see, I have purchased quite a few of their exams myself. This is the CCNA 200-125. I didn't do the two exam path. I did the single composite exam for my CCNA. Um, I also have CCDA. This is the CCNA security. These three are for the Windows Server 2016 MCSA. And these three are the CCNP routing switching. So let's take a look at the CCNA. Hit load exam. As you can see, there are five exams included. Last time I showed you a few questions from exam A. There are 74 total questions, so the chances that we'll get some overlap questions are pretty low. But just in case, I'll do a different exam. I'll do exam B. And I'll do study mode so you can see the explanations. So hit begin. And let's get started. IPv6. OK. You issue the show IPv6 neighbors command on router A and receive the following output. Uh, which of the following is true of the IPv6 address mapping to this uh, MAC address? So there it is down here. And here's the IPv6 address. Okay, it was established but has now expired. Uh, stale, maybe. It has been successfully established it has been successfully established, sorry, can't talk, and remains established. It is in the process of being established. Uh, neighbor confirmation messages are being sent on an ongoing basis. So the state is stale. So I believe the answer is A. And that is correct. Uh, here you can see the explanation um, giving details about the different uh, states, uh, different neighbor states here. Let's go to the next question. Oh, also, sorry, by the way, there are references here, both to Boson's courseware and to Cisco documentation. So very useful if you want more uh, detailed explanation. Next. Okay, you have recently configured a new Cisco router that you have directly connected to an existing LAN, okay? You have verified that the IP address and subnet that you have assigned to the interface connected to the LAN are correct, okay? You have not configured any security or routing protocols on the device yet. You attempt to ping host A on the LAN from the new router multiple times over a period of several minutes, but the ping always fails. Which of the following are you most likely to investigate first? The interface status. Okay. You verified, so the IP address and subnet are correct, but the interface may still be shut down. Um, I, I'm guessing this is probably the answer. Our resolution routing issues, probably not. Um, it's directly connected route to the LAN. ACL configuration, there's no mention of an ACL, so ARP. I doubt it's an ARP problem. It's probably something simple like you didn't uh, no shut down the interface because um, I've mentioned this a few times in my current CCNA 200-301 course. Uh, Cisco switch interfaces are no shutdown by default. Cisco router interfaces are shut down by default. So you'd probably want to check out the interface status, see if it's shut down. Show answer, there we go. Okay, you can see uh, detailed explanation again, and again, some more references to both Boson and Cisco documentation. Okay, let's go next, question three. Which of the following values do not need to match between OSPF routers for the two routers to establish a neighbor relationship? Hello timers, dead timers, MTU values, authentication passwords. 
Authentication definitely does have to match if there are different passwords, they won't become neighbors. And I believe the hello and dead timers do need to match. I think there were five things that needed to match. If I remember that is the correct number, five things. Um, I can't list them off the top of my head right now, but I believe the MTU does not have to match. And that is the correct answer. So again, detailed explanation, both why the correct answer is correct and why the incorrect answers are incorrect. Okay, let's go to question four. Okay, so this is a big one. This will probably be the last question I do. So this is a simlet. We'll look at output in the simulator, probably do some show commands, and then answer these four questions. So this is an EIGRP problem. Now I haven't done EIGRP, EIGRP in a while. Let's see uh, if I can pull this off. So you administer the network shown in the topology diagram. Here's question one here. You can select the questions over on the side here. Why is router four unable to establish a neighbor relationship with router one? Okay, so there's some possibilities here. Two choices, passive interface, K values, summarization, ASN, and variance. Okay, so variance, that is probably not an issue. So router four and router one. Okay, let's check out router four. So first I like to check out the show IP protocols command. There is a passive interface command issued. Fast ethernet zero zero. Let's see if that is the one connected to, oh, we don't have any CDP neighbors yet. How about show run? Hmm, so I don't know if that is the interface connected to R1 or not. Hmm, okay. Um, okay, so the ASN is one. Let's check that out on R1. Show IP protocols. Okay, so there's an issue. Uh, ASN 11 as opposed to ASN 1. So I guess the ASN on router one is incorrect, would be one option. How about the K values? These do have to match. Uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so the K values match. Have any CDP neighbors come up? Yes, they have. Okay, so router one is connected on fast ethernet 0, 0, and that is a passive interface. So that would prevent them from being neighbors. K values, not a problem. Summarization is not an issue and variance, not an issue. So let's check the answer. There we go. And again, explanation why these two are correct and why these three are incorrect. I won't read through the explanation now. And some details here, uh, references, Cisco troubleshoot common EIGRP issues. Okay, let's go to number two. Router one cannot establish an EIGRP neighbor relationship with any device. Which of the following router EIGRP traffic statistics is least likely to be zero? Okay, so I do not remember this. So EIGRP is trying to form relationships. So I believe it will be sending, not queries, hellos to try to set up the relationship. Now it won't be sending updates or queries, replies, because it hasn't formed the neighbor relationship, but it will be try it will be sending hellos to try to form that neighbor relationship. Um, let's see, am I correct? Yes, I am, okay, good. All right, let's go to number three. Why is router one unable to form an EIGRP neighbor relationship with router three? I believe that would be the ASN. Um, we already saw that is different than router fours. Show IP protocols. Yeah, EIGRP, R, EIGRP1 and R1, EIGRP11. So that would be that. The other one's K values. Um, we don't really have to check, but we'll check anyways. Show run. Not a problem. 
summarization, variance, not an issue. So the answer is the ASN number. There we go. Okay, and last one, number four. Which K value is configured different from its default? Uh, what were the defaults? I believe this one, that is K2, should be zero. Uh, again, I don't remember, it's been a while, but I believe that was default zero. Okay, I'm correct. So there we go, I ended up uh, going through seven questions because each of these counts as an individual question. So there you go, bonus two questions. So I'm not finished, but I'll hit end and grade. Uh, yes, and in grade current exam. And here you can see the uh, category breakdown. You know, see your score in each category. This is very useful for identifying your weak points. You can go back to different questions. Um, it's always a good idea after you finish the exam to go through, read, the, read all the explanations. Um, if you use Anki, you can make flashcards. Uh, read the Cisco documentation, things like that. So um, there you go. There's a few questions from Boson XSIM for the CCNA. Again, I can't recommend their products enough. you got a few days left. Go to boson.com. Follow the links in the description to go to boson.com. Get either their XSIM, their NetSIM, their courseware, whatever. Use Mary19, 25% off. It's a great deal. Boson products aren't cheap. Um, how much is XSIM? Let me check that out. I believe it's at least $100 US. So it's not cheap, but let me tell you, it's extremely worth it, absolutely. Um, so there you go, $99 for the ICND-1. For the composite, it's probably a bit more expensive, $119. But it's more than worth it. And especially with this 25% off, this is a great opportunity. So check out Boson, use code Mary19, 25% off and good luck with your studies. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, and share the video with anyone else studying for the CCNA. If you want to leave a tip, check the links in the description. I'm also a Brave verified publisher and accept BAT or basic attention token tips via the Brave browser. That's all for now.